So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, great that you're here uh, for the session. Uh, today I will tell you about the pr um, project called DuckDB and how you can work with it with uh, Geodata. So, um, my name is Jakob Miksch. I'm a software developer at the company Citicom. Uh, you can find me at various places on the internet. We do some uh, uh, telecommunication um, solutions and I work especially in the uh, fiber, optic uh, and broadband infrastructure. And uh, But this project here, um, I just um, worked it on my, my own, so I just uh, learned that it's actually quite popular in the data science world, uh, the DuckDB, and I just tried how you can uh, use it with uh, Geodata and I would like to share my findings with you. So, and here's the, the structure of my talk. So first I would like to give you like a high level overview of uh, DuckDB. Then I want to compare it with other tools uh, that you typically use for data analysis and uh, databases. Then uh, how, uh, to load, then how to load data into DuckDB, how to export it, then uh, uh, how the spatial uh, extension works, then a little example what you could do and then uh, a link to a QGIS plugin and some other references. All right, so um, about DuckDB, it's a quite uh, new project. It, uh, the, the first public release was in 2021. And uh, in 2023, uh, there was a spatial extension and just recently they um, launched a version uh, 1.0. Actually, it was stable before, but now with this 1.0 release, they really want to say they now it's really stable it was uh, the project was developed at the CWI in the Netherlands um, so it's a research institute which uh, deals with databases a lot and uh, authors are Mark Grasfeld and Hannes Mühleisen and uh, it's, it's still in very active development and it's the, it's ideal uh, for uh, analysis and conversion of data so it has some specific use case and it's of course uh, open source license uh, so, what is it? Um, um, so, how to use it? So, um, installation is uh, quite easy. So, um, it has a command line program you can just download. And the nice thing is it's uh, um, a binary that you can just uh, download. There's no uh, dependencies. You can download either for Windows, Mac, or uh, Linux, and it just uh, works out of the box and without any trouble. And uh, command line is quite uh, user friendly, um, especially when you are in this uh, database shell. It has some nice auto completion and so on. Um, then um, it has a native connection to uh, other programming languages like uh, R or Python. And uh, one cool thing is that it's even possible to run it um, in the browser uh, via WebAssembly. So they Com compiled in a way that the, uh, the browser can run it natively, and it has uh, a lot of has a lot of extensions. For example, the spatial extension, and um, it, in contrast to some databases like PostgreSQL, it has a, uh, a more, like a modern SQL with some really nice uh, syntax that's really helpful and on the daily work. And um, when you want to store your data, then your database is a simple file, but it can also uh, live in the memory. Then um, this was just a high-level overview, now a bit more uh, technical. So what is it actually? So um, it's a called in-process analytical database. So when I first learned, uh, tried it out, for me, uh, it, was, it didn't really feel, it feel, didn't feel, feel like a database. It was more like a data processing engine. But you can, uh, it actually is a database in the way that uh, you can, the database is stored in the memory, but you can also store it on the on your computer and give the, the uh, DuckDB file to someone else and this person can open it again. Then in contrast to PostgreSQL, it's not a client-server um, architecture, but um, you have one process where this uh, database lives. And one um, big difference to uh, PostgreSQL, for example, is that uh, the data is uh, stored in a columnar way. So um, this makes it much uh, better for uh, analysis, but not so good for um, data transactions. So it has a different use case. It's more, it's better and, and really fast for analysis. And it's also um, optimized uh, to to run, especially on laptops, so that uh, you can use it on your own machine. It uh, requires uh, 
not that much resources, but uh, it can of course uh, it can actually do multi-threading, and also um, uh, your data is not uh, limited by the RAM. So if you have a really big data set in other um, programming languages or like data or, um, like R or uh, Python, very often you can only uh, process the data which fits in your RAM, and then otherwise the program will uh, uh, shut down. But with DuckDB, um, if the RAM is not enough, it will swap uh, the additional uh, data to the disk and you can still process a big data set on your local machine. Another really cool thing is that uh, you can uh, actually process a lot of uh, different file formats out of the box without any extension and you can also query remote data which is living somewhere on the internet. So um, the data what you're querying does not have to be on your local machine. So. Uh, now I give you a little comparison to other databases. So this is very high level overview. So if you want to get really export information about uh, database types, you should like ask a database uh, person. So but uh, this is a rough uh, uh, organization how you can uh, cluster databases. So this this so called OLTP databases, which are um, uh, built for transactions, so PostgreSQL is a good example that like many people at, at the same time can do transactions and can read and write and so on. And this is a client, uh, PostgreSQL is this uh, popular client server version. Then you have um, SQLite as a file-based um, um, database which lives in the in process, so it's no, not client server. And then there was also for analysis, there was a, uh, there's still a big database, a client server based one called ClickHouse. And then now the, um, this uh, field was empty before and now it's uh, covered by DuckDB, so it's a in process database for anal anal analysis. Then uh, let's compare it a bit to PostgreSQL. So uh, first of all, um, to all people uh, who are well, uh, are a big fan of PostgreSQL like I am, uh, you have, don't have to worry that the DuckDB will replace PostgreSQL, it's just like an uh, addition which uh, can make some simple things easier. Or for example, if you want to do some uh, analysis with PostgreSQL, you um, can now think about using DuckDB instead. So um, a few years ago I had to do an al analysis with uh, a lot of uh, data and I wanted to do the analysis with SQL and I found it so complicated to up, uh, like install your uh, PostgreSQL um, uh, server, then you have to give a password, then you have to uh, log in via uh, um, like a specific port and this is so complex if you just want to do like some data analysis stuff on your own laptop because you don't need all this overhead. So um, in, in this use case DuckDB is a bit um, easier. And But on the other hand uh, PostgreSQL has this great uh, feature that uh, it's multi-user, you have um, a role uh, concept, so you can have multiple users which have access to specific parts of the database. And of course, um, it has uh, wide uh, support in, uh, in the whole software world, but also especially in the Geo world, like with QGIS, GeoServer, MapServer. And of course, uh, in PostgreSQL, you have this PostGIS extension, which is probably the, the best uh, um, the database support uh, for geo operations in total, and uh, DuckDB does not have this uh, great geo support as PostgreSQL has currently. Then uh, another tool which is interesting to compare is uh, OGR to OGR. So um, this is um, like a multi-tool for um, all types of geo data. It can uh, uh, read and write. Uh, uh, vector data and with raster data you can also read and write with uh, the GDAL um, commands. And so you can um, do also some processing, but in, um, in contrast to DuckDB, which I will show later, the syntax is a bit more um, not so intuitive compared to DuckDB, at least from my opinion, but um, it's still very powerful and probably a bit more stable because it has been established for many years and it's uh, battle tested. And uh, yeah, this OGR to OGR might be a bit more uh, difficult to install, if, especially if you want to have uh, the a very latest version. Then another interest, uh, like another um, tool which you compare it, can compare it to, it's um, SQLite or GeoPackage. So it's also a file-based uh, database, very, very widespread. So like every uh, you have you use it every day on your, on your in your web browser probably. Um, so and it's um, 
optimized for transaction, but it's quite uh, slow for queries, com uh, especially compared to uh, DuckDB. But you can expand it, and it's very flexible, so you can create your own formats out of it. For example, Geo package, which is pretty much like a SQLite file within a specific shape. All right, then uh, let's uh, have a, um, a look uh, how you can do this um, with. Uh, how you can uh, use uh, DuckDB within um, other languages. So for example, uh, you have R for data processing and also in the Python world you have Pandas, for example, which you can uh, use for data processing. And um, one really interesting thing is that, uh, as I said before, DuckDB uh, is an in-process database. So in the same uh, uh, Python process you're running, DuckDB will live and this can do the analysis uh, for you. So. Um, for all people working with R or Pandas, this could be really uh, interesting to, to try out because it can uh, things much faster. All right, then um, I want to show you how you can do some SQL and um, with some uh, nice uh, little uh, new uh, syntax. For example, you all know uh, when you want to when you have a table and you want to see all the data from the table, you do uh, select asterisk uh, from my table. Uh, but with DuckDB, you can just write uh, from my table. So it's only uh, two words, but still, like when you do some uh, exploring of data, it can be really, re be really quite easy. Then there's like this keyword describe, so it will describe uh, what your table. Uh, what columns you have, what data types, and so on. And then there's one um, keyword which I, I like so much because I have, uh, w have wanted it in uh, PostgreSQL for so many years. So um, it's called exclude, and it has the use case. Let's say you have a, um, a, database, a database table uh, with 20 columns, and you want to create a view of it, or just select like 19 of these columns. So just uh, just avoid one of them. In PostgreSQL, you have to write select and then write explicitly all the 19 columns you want to have, whereas in uh, DuckDB, you can say, I want to have all columns except of this one, and this makes it so much nicer to, to work with. Uh, like, it's more, much more ergonomic, and you can just, you're much closer to data, in my opinion. Also, um, there's a uh, uh, direct uh, uh, support for many uh, formats, for example, um, CSV. You can say uh, create a, uh, a table and directly sec select uh, data from uh, CSV and it will be directly supported. Then um, how the database works. So um, you want, if you want to create your own database with some data installed uh, um, inside, you can just in your command line you write DuckDB and then my uh, database.duckdb. And then you have a database there, and then you can save all your files and also create uh, some views. And like I said before, you uh, can also um, uh, reference some remote data, for example, some file which, which lives in a bucket on the internet, and then you can create a view which references this data. And then uh, you only save the reference in your database, but not the actual data. So this can be quite useful sometimes. Then uh, what data can be read? So it's um, CSV is directly supported, Parquet files, uh, JSON files as well. And uh, so there's also some uh, connections to um, databases like PostgreSQL, MySQL, SQLite, and so, uh, you can also read uh, raw text files. And now there's this GeoData extension, which can also read a lot of uh, spatial data. So there's a lot of uh, batteries included, um, especially like um, if you have tried to read a CSV file with PostgreSQL, it works, of course, but it can be kind of complicated sometimes. It's, it was always when I wanted to do it, it was a kind of complicated process. But um, with uh, DuckDB, you can just uh, select like from a CSV file on your computer, and uh, it will automatically detect the data types and the column names. And so this makes it also much more ergonomic. Then there's one file support, it's called Parquet. It's also, uh, I think it's kind of a de facto standard in the data science world to, to store some columnar data. And it's more or less like a better CSV format, but of course with much more uh, capabilities. So um, uh, it's optimized uh, 
you can optimize it for many things, but you can also optimize it for queries, and the data is also stored in a columnar yeah way, so you can um, re uh, request some stuff much faster. And yeah, depending what you want, you can have different compressions and so on. And there's also um, a new uh, extension called GeoParquet, uh, but this is not yet supported by DuckDB directly, but uh, will probably come in future. And also one cool thing about this parquet is uh, that you can selectively, uh, selectively read it via um, HTTP requests. For example, you can put like a parquet file on your web server, and then uh, you can request uh, this from uh, from remotely. So, and let's say your parquet file has 100 megabytes, and you're only interested in one column and, all, and only a subset of it, then um, DuckDB can request it and only select uh, this little part of your uh, 100 megabyte and uh, get this data. So, this is quite useful in this case. All right, then uh, just one word about data export. So um, when you have like a table that you created, you can just uh, type a copy places, for example, as your table to places.csv and then you directly have your data exported or to Parquet or whatever you like or SQL. Then um, about uh, DuckDB Spatial, so it's relatively new, it's a bit more than a year, so and it's um, based, based on GDAL, OGR, Broch and Geos for a lot of, uh, uh, functionality, but um, some geometric algorithms are um, implemented by DuckDB itself, so because this makes it a bit faster, but not everything. It has, has a much fewer um, features than PostGIS, um, also no spatial index yet, but might come in future. There's no set and M values. Um, also there you cannot compute geographic dist distances, and um, also, when you have a table of geometries, um, there's no information about the projection, so you have to know which projection your geometry is in. And also, I tried it with many data sources, and it works for quite many, but still it sometimes has some rough edges uh, and with some uh, error messages, messages which were not really understandable, but it's, it's getting a good support. And um, I'll show you a little um, demo how it, what you could do. So it's... Uh, here you have uh, um, some countries with some airports inside, so I have two data sets. Um, one uh, polygon data sets with, air, uh, with uh, countries and one um, uh, uh, point data sets with uh, airports. And then I can do one um, SQL statement and read everything and write everything and I just want to quickly go through it. Actually, don't be shocked, it's not, shouldn't be too complicated, so you have to read it from inside to outside. So if, this is the, the first uh, statement, so you um, actually can read um, like a geo package directly and reference a specific layer, and this geo package has to live on your computer somewhere. Then I say from this um, AirPods dataset, I would like to have the name and uh, uh, the, here, and um, then I can join it um, from a shapefile, which is also living on my computer. And I can say I would like to have all the airports with, which are within a specific country. So I, I get this, and then um, I have the airport name and the country name, and then I can do like um, a little analysis. So I can say I would, would like to have a list with all my countries, and then the count of the airports. Then I want to order, uh, by group it by the, the country name and order it, and then um, finally I write it down to a, um, a CSV file, and then I have it. So. Basically what's happening here, I just do like a little uh, GIS analysis um, only with one SQL command and it reads directly uh, some uh, geospatial data from different formats and can uh, write the, the data directly out as well and it's just one process you can just do from the command line and this is only a very simple example but I just uh, shall show you what, uh, what it's capable to do. All right, then there's also a QGIS plugin developed by Auslandia. I haven't tried it yet, but um, it's um, uh, yeah, in development. There you can also read the blog post. Then uh, as a conclusion, so um, it's still uh, growing in the data science world. It's quite popular already, and I think it, in the geo world it will also become more important, so you should keep an eye on it. It's ideal for analysis. There's no replacement for PostgreSQL, and yeah, it has a growing ecosystem. And uh, one thing I would like to show you finally, before I'm finished, is this uh, 
online shell of DuckDB. So you can type here shell duckdb.org and then uh, you have direct access to like a DuckDB database in your browser. Then you get some uh, examples. For example, here um, it shows you how to um, select some data sets which are living somewhere on the internet. So here, for example, there's a parquet file. And so I can just uh, use the select statement. Uh, and now you see some time and then inside your browser it will do some uh, processing. So this is quite cool and yeah, so gives a lot of opportunities. Good, thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Jakob. That was uh, very nice. Uh, other questions? Hmm. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah, it uh, looks really promising. Uh, maybe you know something, or how, in your opinion, would be the roadmap for connecting DuckDB with the web services, for example, for a vector tile server like uh, uh, Martin or something like that. Is, do you think there are somewhere they are going to work with this? Or because right now it's very cool to analyze and, and use probably in QGIS, but how to push this uh, into the web? Um, so how, at, at which point would you integrate DuckDB then, or where would? Uh... As the database for a tile server or ah, a okay. render server. Um, yeah, good question. So it's probably not, uh, yeah. Actually, I, I, don't, I don't know, so I have the feeling it's, um, yeah, I actually cannot make a good uh, answer here. But yeah, maybe you can try. So it's, it's still quite new. So maybe you can make an experiment and share your results. So I guess there's many opportunities to use that, yeah? Other questions? Uh, can you maybe tell if you have worked, it, uh, worked with DuckDB on like a big data and uh, the indexing, like how, how's the, how does it work compared to, let's say, PostGIS? Um, like when you have like, let's say, million of polygon. Uh, indexing, you mean? Yeah. Um, there's no uh, uh, spatial index yet. So it's not built in yet, but it might come in the future. So uh, yeah. So when you make a query, then it has to compute everything. But it's still quite a fast. So I, when I experimented with it, it, it didn't really, uh, it, it didn't feel that slow. So, but this is still coming at one point, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, yeah. You mentioned like DuckDB is used for analysis majorly. So, uh, but do you also see like a use case where end users can use DuckDB because you mentioned that it can be used in the web just to query the data like run in WebAssembly. But do you also see like some sort of UI component where people can interact with geospatial data, but not limited by the features that are put in by the developer, but like a very open-ended sort of way into looking at geospatial data? Um. So uh, I'm not sure if I understand correctly. So um, you mean how you can use it in the web or like? Yeah, I use it in the web for just like a query engine for your geospatial data. Yeah, so um, let's see. Um, yeah, I think you have the full uh, here. You have even the 1.0 version. So um, I most of the time I played around with the local version. But um, I guess you can just also install um, yeah, you, can, you have to try. So maybe you can even install the extension here and uh, read some geospatial data. But yeah, it, it, to my experience, it still has some rough edges. But uh, yeah, it should definitely work at one point that you can also use your browser as a geospatial engine. But yeah, I think it's quite new, so you have to try. But yeah. You certainly can uh, use the Python bindings and then wrap something around it. So thank you for for a great talk. Uh, my question is about performance. Uh, did you uh, did you do some tests uh, about performance uh, comparison between DuckDB, Pandas, uh, Polars, maybe also, 
or maybe do you know some results from from other uh, other reports, other uh, researchers about it? Um, I don't know any performance uh, measurements, but um, I'm pretty sure that it's quite f much faster than pandas. So, because uh, yeah, there's actually um, also I think on my slides there's. Um, some Pretty really good. Find um, some on the web, probably also. What? I think there have been there's some posts on some performance comparisons on the web, probably also. Yeah, yeah. So actually, the, here's um, actually here I put uh, most of the relevant posts in the world of geospatial, but uh, they have a really active blog, and they also do some comparisons, uh, performance um, comparison there, and yeah. So you can check there. So one last question.